If you've been buying a brisket smaller than this one, you might be making a big mistake. Let me explain why. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dead Barbecue, and today we are gonna solve perhaps the biggest issue that is holding you back from turning out the quality brisket that you want to get at home. But I recognize with this advice, we are going to introduce a new problem, but fear not, I have a solution for this as well, which is my top five brisket leftover ideas. Let me explain why this issue matters so much. If your grocery stores are anything like mine, you may have fallen for this brisket mistake before. And I can see why. Grocery stores are notorious at putting amazing deals on small packer briskets or sometimes even just the flat. And so your thought process might be similar to mine, which is I've got nothing to lose. It doesn't cost an arm and a leg, so I'm saving money. And the second most popular consideration is I only have a small family. Not everyone loves a brisket. And what am I gonna do with 17 pounds of a full packer brisket. I don't want to have a bunch of leftovers or even worse, discard what I am paying top dollar for. And so like many of you, I've fallen for this brisket mistake, wanting to A, save money and not have copious amounts of brisket. That is until I discovered I was doing myself and everybody in our family who likes brisket a huge disservice. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with your logic in terms of A, wanting to save money and say, well, if it goes bad, at least I'm not losing an arm and a leg and or constant conservation mode, which is I just don't need to cook that much more than what our family consume. These are both rock solid from a logic perspective. But what this is missing is the narrow window at getting the brisket to the perfect temperature. On a full size packer brisket, this is about a 30 minute window where our brisket is undercooked to if you go past that 30 minutes, you start to get overcooked. If you're not sure which of these two that you're getting between undercooked and overcooked, a quick way to tell is an undercooked brisket is firm to the touch. If you go to do the bend test, instead of folding over your finger and being able to flop freely, it has stiff characteristics and doesn't really want to bend over. This is an undercooked brisket. On the contrary, if you have an overcooked brisket, this is very tender starting to dry out, but it becomes crumbly. So when you're slicing it with your knife, you may have difficulty getting the pieces to stay together. And if you do the finger test, often they'll just fall apart and they can't withstand even the tension of their own weight. So that's a quick reference in terms of undercooked, overcooked, to maybe make sense of what brisket that you've been turning out and you can make some adjustments. But coming back to why a smaller brisket is that much more difficult. So that 30 minute window is on a full size brisket. The smaller the brisket you get, the smaller this knife edge window of correctly getting the doneness absolutely right becomes. I've used this analogy before, but go back to, you know, college days, think beer pong, but we're a family friendly show. So I'm gonna use coins and a bowl. So if we have a large bowl, this represents our packer brisket. And if we are a couple feet away and trying to toss a coin, you can see here, even my uh, illustration, I'm able to go four for four and getting those coins to land in a large bowl. Representing the smaller brisket is a cup, which really, again, uh, is narrowing that window of getting perfect doneness. And as you can see, at least at my skill level, I went 0 for 4. So the same distance, the same coin, just a matter of shrinking size of the target that we're working with exponentially increases the difficulty of landing on the target doneness that we want. And the same is true from cooking now hundreds of briskets on going with a smaller pack of brisket. So next time you're out doing some brisket shopping, put a floor line here of about 12 pounds. Anything from 12 pounds up to 17 pounds is a great size to be working with. And this is all before trim. And if you're saying, James, I don't have a big Joe or an offset like I am blessed to have. I have a much smaller cooker. I've been able to do a full packer brisket. I think it was around 15 pounds from memory pre-trim on something as small as my 13 inch grid size Kamado Joe Jr. So you can absolutely pull this off and you will be so thankful once you give this a try because the quality of the brisket is exponentially better than those smaller briskets. We tend to get more intermuscular fat, we have a thicker flat, which is again, much easier to cook and get the doneness right. And we widen our window of finding the perfect time to pull that brisket off for probe tenderness and pass the bend test. But this is the part of the video where we solve one problem. And if you're like me, a family of four, we introduce another problem, which is what to do with the copious amounts of brisket leftovers. So let me demonstrate this on a recent brisket cook where we have way too many brisket get leftovers. I'm going to walk you through my process in terms of how I break them down to individual packages, put them aside for freezing, as well as my top five 
brisket leftover recipes. There's chapters down below if one interests you more than the other, but our family absolutely loves all five. And I promise you're not only gonna be happier with the brisket the day of your cook in terms of what you serve, you're gonna absolutely love having these leftover recipes in your arsenal. Let's get into it. So let's start with packing up some of our leftovers, starting with nachos. I like to use the part of the flat that joins with the point end. So we'll get some here, see where we're at for weight. Perfect, I don't think you can see the screen, but that's reading 1.5 pounds. So normally I plan on about a half pound per person. And since this is gonna be shredded on top of nachos, this is going to be enough for a large party platter uh, that you'd be able to feed many people. That's just one and a half pounds of brisket. Next, let's do some tacos. I like the, the really lean end for that. Perfect, so that's just over a pound, and normally it's my wife and I that like to make those into either a fajita or a taco mix, so a pound is going to be perfect. Add those to the bag. So next, I like to save a larger chunk between our two ends, so between our lean end and our fatty end, so we're getting a bit of each muscle in here for something like a brisket mac and cheese. And that's gonna work out perfect. That's just over two pounds. I was gonna say two pounds. Uh, I'm not gonna trim any off of that, even though it's about 2.2 pounds. That's gonna be perfect for something like a brisket mac and cheese. Okay, getting down to the good stuff. So we've got a little bit of leftover point. So this is something that I like to do for something like a brisket burnt end chili. So this feels a little bit lighter. I'm gonna see if I do one or both pieces here. So we're about 1.7 pounds. Let's see what our other piece is. I might get enough for two servings. 1.9 pounds. So I'm just gonna add a little bit and actually make this into two packages for something like leftover brisket chili. Okay, let's start with a quick and easy one, which is brisket nachos. I like this one because if you're fortunate enough to have a sous vide machine, you can set that up for about 141 degrees Fahrenheit and have that run say something like when you're off to church or whatever it is uh, that you're up to. And when you come back, your brisket will be completely thawed from sitting in the freezer however long that you've had it and ready to go. So this pack has been in there for about two hours and as you can see, still steaming a little bit. So it's all ready. So all we need to do is prepare a couple vegetables that we want on our nachos. I'm going for about a quarter cup of green onions here. Next we'll do some red pepper. Cover your baking pan in foil, make cleanup a lot easier and cover that with nachos. Our family loves covering nachos with some salsa. The downside is you get a little bit of soggy texture, but the upside is some great flavor, especially with brisket. Brisket and a nice medium salsa almost seem made for one another. So I'm just gonna apply this all over the nachos. So take a fast forward while I do that. Remove our brisket. No right way or wrong way to do it, but I like to put the brisket on before adding any of our toppings or cheese to help lock in some of that juiciness that's left. You can see steaming off the plate. If you put it on top and then put it in the oven, especially since we saved some brisket flat for this, it can be prone to drying out ever so slightly. Cover that up with some Monterey Jack shredded cheese. Tex-Mex or anything like that will work just as well. Sprinkle on your peppers and onions. And that's ready to hit the oven. But of course around here, I don't mean any ordinary oven. If you were following along at home, just like I am here, you'd be at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. In for a couple minutes. Oh, those look good to me. And just in time for game day, our brisket nachos are ready. Let's dive in for a taste test. Cheers. Wow. Because we reheated with sous vide and only were in the oven for a matter of three to four minutes, this brisket is still incredible incredibly juicy and moist, full of flavor. We didn't lose any of that, didn't dry out. We were not exposed to the heat for a long time. And we've got some cheese as an excuse to protect it. <laughs> it's absolutely awesome. I'm gonna grab another one here. Melted cheesy brisket goodness. This is super simple and insanely delicious, but we got four more to cover. On to the next. Okay, our brisket for our chopped brisket sandwich has been reheating in sous vide. I may not like sous vide for cooking, but boy, does it do a good job for barbecue? So I'm just gonna prep up some onions. The whole family's having this for dinner tonight. I'm just gonna make one of these on camera. So I'm not gonna put copious amounts of onion just on my one sandwich. As awesome as that would be. Chop up some pickle. Let's go grab the brisket. Remove some brisket. And as it's a chopped brisket sandwich, we are going to chop this up. Some onions, pickles, some barbecue sauce. Cheers. Oh, it's a two-hander. The best kind of sandwich. That's fantastic. And that's only one out of five ideas. On to the next. Oh, 
Next, we're gonna make brisket tacos using an authentic chimichurri from Argentina. I absolutely love this one. Now this recipe works best if you make the chimichurri at least two hours ahead of time, but you can even make it a day in advance for even more flavors, time for everything to meld together. Let me show you how to make it. Okay, this one's not really too messy. You don't really need gloves if you're not following along with something like habaneros. But since I always end up rubbing my eye or worse, using the restroom or something like that after handling hot peppers, I'm gonna do gloves to protect myself from myself. So you only need one of these, get this out. So by breaking the pepper into quarters, we can run along the spine here and remove the pith. Try and do that in a way that you can see. There we go. So most of the heat comes from anything that you see that is white, not necessarily the seeds. So that's good to go. I'll take you fast forward while I get our next few ready. Okay, these are good. Let's get a fine dice on those. Add that into our bowl. Next, we can get a coarse chop on our Italian parsley. Add that in. Next, I've got our red wine vinegar and garlic. I'm going for the Costco prepared garlic, but if you have fresh garlic, you can absolutely add that in along with our dried oregano. And for the half cup of olive oil, don't add all of it right away. We're just gonna start with about half and see how we're doing on our ratios once we get some salt and pepper into our equation. Oh, looks like I've already ground up too much fresh pepper from last time. My pepper cannon, add that. And the reason we're holding back again on the olive oil is once we get some salt in here, this is uh, Malden's smoked salt, is that will also pull out some moisture from our leaves and we'll get a sense on if we're running a little dry or need a little bit of extra liquid. Let this meld together for a couple hours. All right, this is again one of those, there's really no right way, wrong way to do it, but I, I'll show you how I do it. I like to get a nice piece of our brisket flat that has been in the sous vide at 140 degrees, cooling off fairly quickly on me out here. Our chimichurri, you can see I didn't need to add any more of that olive oil as the salt started to pull out the liquid and incorporate everything together. And I like a nice, healthy dollop of that. The other advantage of something like a chimichurri versus a sauce is that it's an olive oil base. So olive oil is a fat. And just like a lot of people on YouTube rely on brisket tallow, wagyu tallow, or anything like that, it's really just fat which coats the tongue, gives you a bit of that sensation or lubrication that helps it tell the brain that what you're eating is tender and juicy. That fat can cover up a lot of sins. And so on something like a brisket taco where we're using the lean end, which is oxidizing fairly quickly on me outside, going with an olive oil based chimichurri or something like what we've made today, is gonna help this feel like it's absolutely exploding with juiciness. Cheers. Mm. So this is probably one of my favorite ways to take a lean cut like the flat, if we have leftovers, and make it sing again as the absolute hero. This perfect combination of getting the smoke, the tenderness, along with that chimichurri with the olive oil base, just makes everything feel kind of like we're eating the point end. There's nothing dry or boring about this from a flavor perspective. It's an amazing way to help serve up any brisket leftovers that you have the next day or even weeks or months down the road if you vac sealed and froze it like I've done and bring it back to life with gentle heat from sous vide. But this is only one of our four leftover brisket recipes. So on to the next. Okay, next up is a version of my over the top chili, but instead of doing an over the top meatloaf style so we can get some smoke, we already have plenty of smoke in our smoked brisket. So come nice and close, let me show you how we're gonna make it. So I've already added into a bowl our two cans of crushed diced tomatoes, Rotel, as well as rinsed black beans and maple beans. And before you fill up the comments with James beans, there's no beans in Texas chili. I have plenty of genuine Texas recipes with no beans, but this one our family absolutely loves and it goes amazing amazing with something like leftover brisket. So that's what we're making today. I'm gonna glove up while handling some hot peppers, but what we're gonna do is break down some habanero, green pepper, red pepper, as well as a whole white onion, and then add it into my five quart Dutch oven. And then over here, we've got our four tablespoons uh, of each ingredient, along with some olive oil, garlic, and some red cooking wine. I'll take you fast forward while we get everything ready. Hot peppers are just coming into a season where I am, so I didn't have time to do a batch, but I've got a video on it if you'd like to check that out. Search for 
Komodo dehydrator where I smoke and dehydrate with the smoke on my Komodo running around 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit manual. And what that does is that takes fresh peppers like these habaneros, smokes them and preserves them so I can use them all winter long in things like soups and chilies. And it's another great way of getting some smoke into your dish if you haven't checked that out. I came out of fast forward for a shameless plug, but back to fast forward. And let's move over to our Kamado Joe running at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll be cooking direct on the X-Ring accessory. The X-Ring will hold my five quart Dutch oven down in, just like this. It sits a little bit lower on the Big Joe than the Classic, but both Kamado sizes fit this uh, large five quart Dutch oven. If you get the larger seven quart Dutch oven, it just sits on top, but that can get a little bit precarious, which is why I prefer the, even though it's gonna be full today at capacity, five quart size. Add in our olive oil and garlic. Give that a stir. Let those sweat for about five minutes. Okay, while our onions and peppers are sweating out, getting some of the raw ingredients, especially off of the things like the garlic uh, in our Dutch oven, I've just removed our two pounds of brisket. This mostly our fat end, so our point end. I'm gonna break this into cubes. This is gonna sort of break down and shred as it cooks in our chili, but I, as much as I can try and get it into a one inch cube to save some texture integrity of our brisket. Oh, that's, that smells really good. Just like that, keeping them into about one inch cubes. Whoops. Mmm. That's <laughs> gonna be good. Okay, let's take a look at our onions. Oh, I like what I see there. Those are simmering along, sweating out beautifully. I think we're ready to add our base ingredients. So the first thing I'm gonna add is our rub mixture. You can, I don't know if you can see all four layers down there. Give this a couple minutes before we add everything else, just to again, to incorporate, act as a bit of a roux. Next, we're gonna add our beans, tomato, and rotel mixture, our 150 milliliters of cooking wine, and we're gonna let that come up to a light simmer before we add our brisket. Okay, we're about five minutes later. We should just be getting close to a light simmer, which we can see working around the outside of our Dutch oven. So this is the point where I wanna bring it up a level on your divide and conquer rack. So we wanna go on the top rack, whether you're on the series two or series three, this is gonna give us a little bit more distance from our fire and help us just stay at a light simmer. We can add our brisket now, mix this together, add the top of the Dutch oven, and we'll let that gently simmer for about two hours. Okay, right on time, two hours later, our chili is ready. I tasted the chili off camera and there's two things that it needed. A touch more salt, so I just added a sprinkle of Malden's smoked sea salt, as well as a little bit of vinegar. So I added one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and after letting that uh, mix together, it was absolutely on the money. I also uh, had a little bit of leftover chopped parsley from making our chimichurri earlier and I've added that in just because I had it and it adds a little bit of color. So now that's all fully mixed and incorporated. By the way, add any cilantro or parsley after it comes off the heat so you can keep some of that nice bright green color. But I think the moment of truth is here. Let's dive in for our taste test. Amazing chunks of brisket all the way here. You can still see smoke ring and the bark on there. It's gonna be good. Mm. Wow. That is amazing. Just a few short days ago, it was 85 degrees here and felt like summer. In fact, this video started in Hawaiian shirt and now we moved to fall shirt as the temperature has plummeted and brings on the taste of fall weather and nothing says fall better than an amazing smoked brisket chili. This is worth making on your own, but it's even better if you have something like leftover brisket to really set it off. But amazing as this is, I've saved the best for last. Let's move on to our brisket mac and cheese. Mm. All right, let's get ready for our brisket mac and cheese. Now I've shared this recipe before in a full video doing baby backs with a smoked mac and cheese. So to help keep this video a little bit shorter, uh, I'm gonna write all the details on the website in terms of how to get to this point where we already have our mac and cheese and just focus on finishing it with our brisket, jalapeno and panko uh, in terms of getting a really great presentation. So if you're following along at home, just know that this is half of the recipe uh, online and this is half of the brisket that I had sitting in the sous vide. So I just want to mix this in. Uh, no really sort of method to the madness until it looks well dispersed. We don't want to be shy <laughs> with our brisket, but at the same time, uh, we don't want to get any uh, or get to the point where we don't even see mac and cheese. So let me just mix this in. 
Ooh, so hot. Should have gone for a glove underneath. Next, we're just going to put a thin layer of panko on top. You can substitute if uh, if you want with uh, pork panko. Works really well. Gets a nice golden crispy finish. Next, I'm going to do some jalapeno thin slices that we're going to put on top for a little bit of extra color as well as some heat. Looks good. Let's get in the oven. That looks about perfect. So we're going to add this in 350 degrees until we're nice and golden brown on top. You can do this in the Joe on any grill or a pizza oven. I picked the pizza oven just because its signature heat profile is coming from the top down, whereas the Kamado Joe, uh, most of our heat signature is coming from the bottom up. And what we want to get a nice golden brown is that top down heat. And the pizza oven is the easiest tool, uh, maybe outside of an offset, but it'd be a little crazy to fire an offset up just for that small little dish is to get that top down heat. So I'll get the door and we'll check back in about 15 to 20 minutes. It's been a long time since I busted out the smell of vision reference, but I seriously wish that you had it because the aromas coming off of a smoked brisket mac and cheese, it doesn't get any better. We haven't even tasted it yet, and we're this excited. We need to calm down. Let's dive in and see how it is. Get a nice big helping here, a couple of jalapenos, of course some brisket, along with that mac and cheese mix of old cheddar gruyere. It's gonna be good. Woo! I know I said this is supposed to be a brisket leftover. This is so good. I would almost make a brisket just for the sole purpose of making this dish. It is so good. The details for each of these recipes now lives on my brand new website at smokingdadbarbecue.com. Go check it out. I'll give you the complete measurements and ingredients for all five of the recipes. Plus, while you're there, be sure to sign up for my newsletter. We're starting with once a quarter. So every three months will be a newsletter. And as a thank you for signing up for that newsletter, I'm also offering a free ebook with my finishing temperatures. And unlike every other finishing temperature book, I'm including other helpful bits of information in terms of how long to rest it, what type of wood to use, Use, as well as any sort of tallow or compound butter injections that turn out the best results along with some cooking tips to make it easier to get great results every time you fire up your grill. And again, there is no cost. That's free when signing up with the newsletter. That's it for today. Be sure to let me know down in the comments which of these five recipes are your favorite. Our family's favorite is the brisket mac and cheese. This is absolutely a go-to winner, but you can't go wrong with any of these top five recipes. That's it for today. I'm James from Smoking Head Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.